Awesome. Well, uh, hello everybody. Hi. 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 Good evening. Hi. This is cool. I like this. All right. Um, Rocket Fuel Nutrition. So, uh, for those of you, I think I've met everybody. My name is Todd. Uh, I'm a chiropractor by profession, so I always like to start with full disclosure. I'm not a nutritionist. I don't have a degree in, you know, food biochemistry. Uh, I'm not, it's beyond the context of an hour talk to talk, to deep dive into every aspect of nutrition. Fair enough. I mean, that's like a degree. So what I, what I like to do is I like to share some basics and some fundamentals and some principles that really apply to just about everybody. Now, if you're sitting there and you're going, well, I have some chronic illness, you know, I have autoimmune, I got lupus, I have cancer, I have diabetes, well, then you might need some tailored, specific nutritional help, okay? In which case, I have people I can refer you to. But for 80, 90% of you, or even, though, even if you have health challenges, this is still applicable for most of you, okay? So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So yes, I'm a chiropractor by trade. That's what I'm an expert at. That's what I constantly study and train for. But I've been studying health and wellness for 20 plus years. And so I like to teach, those of you who heard me speak before, I like to teach uh, in terms of, of principles. Because if you understand the principles, then you can apply that to all your choices. You know, run, run through your choices through that filter. For example, in the context of nutrition, um, if you're like, well, should I eat this? Is this going to be good for me or not? Well, if you have some basic principles, you can run it through that filter and it will just tell you, yeah, I probably shouldn't eat that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you know, some of it's obvious. And here's another big factor. Has everybody heard that, you know, sugar's bad for you? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if, you know, if you've heard that, that sugar's not, that's everybody. But does everybody still eat sugar? Yeah. There's the problem. I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying I don't eat sugar, right? But the reality is probably half, I mean, some of you have been here, you've heard me speak multiple times on nutrition. And you'll get something different out of it each time, so it's cool if, you're, if you repeat. It's good for me, too. So, and for some of you, you're very versed in nutrition, probably. But just because you understand something and know something doesn't necessarily mean you're applying it. So a lot of times when I share concepts with people, I always like to get into, like, our beliefs, right? Like, if people know that donuts and Coca-Cola are bad, <laughs> why do we still eat them? Like, you know, okay, Sally, we got this fresh Krispy Kreme right out of the fryer. <laughs> or we have this apple. <laughs> right? Like, well, why do we choose the donut? We know it's bad, right? Um, but we do it anyway. And I think part of that is deep, 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 deep down in our subconscious, we don't really equate that donut with we just don't like, yeah, no, it's not good for me. <laughs> but when I was like, like, we like we almost joke about it. But it's like, well, when you get the bad news, it's not funny anymore, right? It's like, huh, ah, okay, this is actually a real deal. Now, am I saying you can't occasionally have a donut? We don't have to go crazy here tonight. That's the other thing. People like nutrition. He's going to get up there and tell me I got to eat kale smoothies and eat bars. And I'd rather just die young, <laughs> right? Um, so the cool thing is, and again, we won't get into all of it tonight, is you can eat really healthy and really tasty. Like you can satiate yourself and it's good and it's tasty and all that stuff. Um, again, it's a process. For some of you, you're like, oh yeah, I'm already there, I'm halfway there. Uh, and then for some of you, it might be just a whole new way of, I gotta learn how to shop, how to prep the food and cook it. But once you get that down, um, you know, you're, you're, you're happy, you're content and you're healthy. So it's a win-win, right? I also think the challenge is um, time. It's always time of month. Right? Time of month. What's cheaper? What's quick? What's tasty? Mm, fast food? Well, I don't even think that's tasty. Anymore, but, yeah, last time I, I, the last time I ate at McDonald's was in 2009, <laughs> February of 2009, in Sydney, Australia. By the way, it's Australia Day. Yeah, so we were. I was there. Had to take the boards for because to practice chiropractic there. If you're coming from overseas, you have to take national board exams, which I already took and passed here, and had already been practicing for six years. So you think they were just grandfather me in? They don't. So anyway, we were in Sydney to take these boards, and uh, it was like eight or nine at night, and me and my colleagues. We're walking around starving. 
And you think Sydney, right? We're right there by the by the you know where the opera house is and everything. And nothing's open. It was like a Friday night or something, and it's like nine o'clock. I'm sure there'll be some open in Sydney. Nothing. The only thing open, McDonald's. Like, all right, I'll just get a couple cheeseburgers. How bad could it be? Needless to say, I went to bed with a stomach ache and nauseous. And I'm like, well, I should just went to bed hungry. And that was it, 2009. So we're going on, what is that, 14 years ago. Haven't missed it. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'm also going to preface with, real quick, uh, I don't always eat perfect. Our family doesn't do things perfectly. But I think when you're, as a, as a whole, if you're functioning well and you're healthy, you can get away with your, you know, your Friday night Super Bowl, what is it? queso dip and beer, you know, like you just can't make a habit out of those things. Um, that's if you're functioning and healthy. If you have chronic health issues or weight issues, then you probably need to modify that, which we'll touch on, right? So let's, let's dive in here. I go off on tangents, as you can tell. We were talking about Australia. <laughs> uh, I like to, add, you know, get you guys thinking, and this is a rhetorical question. Are you as healthy today as you were five years ago? So it'll get you thinking, boy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, your answer is yes, no, or maybe, maybe. And by the way, if you're going maybe, the answer is no. So it's yes or no. All uh, right. And, and so I always think in terms of that. So if your answer is no, you know, if this is you know five years, and here's where you were five years ago and your health is, you're not as healthy five years later, well, to get here, you've been going the wrong way. So if you keep living and doing what you're doing, where will you be in another five? That's not a good trajectory, right? And then eventually you have a big health crisis and, you know, I'm probably not the person you're going to need to see when that happens. So now you're getting picked up in a pair by a paramedic and it's scary time. Right? Now we have a health crisis. And now all of a sudden, you know what? I think I'll have that apple. I think maybe I should start, you know, getting some exercise that I've been, you know, putting off, right? So really everything we're doing in teaching, it doesn't matter where you are here, but the goal is that over time, one year, five years, whatever, you're going that way. At some rate, maybe if it's even like this. <laughs> But you go on the right way rather than a negative direction. Does that make sense? So all your choices matter. So what did I eat today? Did I nourish my brain with some positive things, right? If you go to bed watching the news, what do you get? Depressed. Depressed. And by the way, when you see I go on my tangents. When you go to sleep, when you're still dreaming and sleeping, your brain will replay. Like if you're watching the bad news, and you're like, oh, that is depressing, and I don't even know if that's real. And then your brain's actually replaying that in your subconscious six times while you sleep. Bad, bad, bad. And so when you wake up, how do you feel? Bad. Right? And that actually changes your physiology, which is bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I like to, you know. My thing, and I like TV, but I watch something that's lighthearted, just a bit of comedy. I don't have TV, I have like discs, or I'll very pickily chew something off of Hulu. Uh, but we're very discriminatory about what we let in, right? Because your thoughts can make you sick. So you want to put good stuff in there, because there's enough bad out there. Anyway, you guys with me? That way. <laughs> that's my tangent about, uh, you know, the news and bad, bad thoughts. So this is what you want to be asking, and so let's flip this. Where will you be five years from now? So whatever age you are, you know, 23, <laughs> add five years. So when you're 28 or 68 or 78, whatever the case may be, where do you want your health to be? And it doesn't matter what age you are. You can be going this way over that time. Okay, so my, my idea is, you know, our goal is to get you to your healthiest God-given potential, whatever that is. That doesn't mean you're going to feel good 24-7. I don't feel good 24 I've been like kind of hobbling, you know, I kind of tweaked my hips, so I've been hobbling around half the week. But I'm still functioning at my best. So even when you're healthy, you can have illness or pain inside of being healthy, which sounds weird, counterintuitive, because we're not taught that. We're taught symptoms are bad, you need a pill to suppress it. 
Yeah. Um, you know, if I broke my leg, I'd like a pillow to suppress that. <laughs> Within a reason. All right? So there are three ways to improve your quality of life. That's why we're really here. No one really is like, I want to learn about food. You just want, you know, we all want to just like, what's easy, tasty, quick. Like, that's what we really want. But we do go, okay, well, I want to be healthy because I want my quality of life to be good. It's not even about the healthy. It's about what it gets you. Well, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to play golf. I want to be able to take my grandkids to Disney all day. Well, you can't do that if you've lost your health. Okay, so I want to be healthy. So what are the requirements for health? Nutrition's a part of, you know, it's a spoke on the wheel, right? Um, so three ways to improve your quality of life. Increase your standards. So in other words, what are you tolerating? You just kind of got to get tired, you know, fed up with it. Like, okay, I need to just make some change. I'm just going to do it, right? Increase your standards. So if your standards here, you know, uh, maybe we'll just bump it up a notch. I mean, you can go here if you want, all right? But we gotta increase your standards, okay? What you're gonna tolerate. Apply better strategies, so we're gonna give you some tonight. I'll have a, some handouts for you guys to take. And really, you kinda gotta become a, to some degree, a student, right? Some of you in here are already onto that, which is great, because again, we could spend three entire days here, and you still wouldn't wanna be scratching the surface, so. Um, but you wanna become kinda your own, in a sense, your own doctor. <coughs> Right? You're going to learn more tonight about nutrition than your GP did in medical school, mm -hmm. just tonight. They're like, yeah, you know, nutrition is uh, food. On to the next thing. That's what they get taught. Yeah. Okay? Change your beliefs. So this is the hardest one, and I kind of talked about that. Like, if you had the apple and the donut, you don't really believe that that donut's going to cause diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's. You don't really, deep down, you don't believe that. So you choose, you eat the donut. So we got to get here because your beliefs, anybody heard of the be, do, have? Uh, hey, Carolina, can I have a paper towel, please? Don't. Yeah. Just wad it up and throw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get that far. <laughs> Thank you. Just throw the eraser over Carl's head. <laughs> so the be, do, have strategy, okay? <laughs> Because I'm going to give you something to some, a piece of paper to set some goals for yourself. Because otherwise, as we're just talking and go home and nothing changed. Like that was interesting, honey. Sure was. Hand me a donut. <laughs> right. So be do have, and you can apply this anywhere in your life. So where do we as human beings focus? We focus here. I want to have the body I want. I want to have the health I want. I want to have the house I want. I want to have the marriage that I want. Have, 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 right? Which is fine. That's great. You should have, have goals, right? So what do you, what does your mind do? Your mind goes, well, this is in the context of nutrition. Maybe your goal is I want to lose 20 pounds as an example. Okay. That's what I want to have. I want to have a 20 pound lighter body. What do I have to do to make that happen? And that's where we stop. Do, I got to do something, but you're not going to do this unless you just the be. Who are you? In other words, what kind of person do I need to become that's actually going to do this so that I can have what I say I want? This is where, this is the hardest part, is the be. Be, do, have. Right? I want to make a million dollars and will it to my grandkids. Cool. You know, what do I got to do? I got to save, I got to invest, I got to... Okay, well, what kind of person do I have to be to make, save, invest? You guys with me? Otherwise, we're just kind of, what's the expression? Whizzing into the wind. <laughs> All right. All right. Choice or chance. So this is huge because our current healthcare system teaches us and has taught us culturally for several generations that your health is kind of chance, right? I think I might have a slide before I go scribbling. Uh, no, I don't. So where does where do health problems come from? This is what we're taught. Genes, maybe bad luck, age. Well, you're getting older. You're supposed to, you're supposed to have arthritis. Uh, you know, you're supposed to have these problems because that's normal. Or, oh, well, your dad had it, your uncle had it. It's just in his genetic. You know, that's, you know. oh, well, it's just bad. You know, luckily they're all bad luck. So can you control your genes? Yeah. You can affect them, but you, I can't give you new DNA. Your DNA is your DNA, right? 
You can, we'll talk about it in a minute, you can affect how your genes express themselves. That you can control, all right? What about bad luck? Can you control bad luck? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can always predict that. Yeah. <laughs> can you do anything about aging? No, you're gonna, you know, how the clock's gonna go. So if there's nothing you can do about those, then what can you do, what accountability could you possibly take for your health if there's nothing you can do for those? You're not accountable. I'm a victim of my genes. I'm a victim of bad luck. I'm a victim of age. Victim. And you've probably all heard that the victim mentality don't get us too far. So first of all, this is a lie. <laughs> okay? This is how many of us have exactly what we need genetically to be healthy. I'm sure most of us fall in the 99.6 percentile. And that's the, that's the low number. Right? Most studies will say maybe 0.1% have an actual genetic issue that's going to impede your health, like Down syndrome right? or something like that. So we'll talk briefly about how your genes can express. Can you have a gene that gives you a propensity for a health issue? Well, how heart disease seems to run in my family. Maybe, but so does eating McDonald's and, you know, <laughs> sitting on the couch all day seems to run. No, in fact, nobody runs in your family. I think that's the problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> But you can change how your genes express themselves, okay? And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Bad luck, I don't know if I believe too much in, in, in luck, but uh, in age, there's nothing you can do about that. But there's 80-year-olds out there running marathons, and there's 60-year-olds that can barely walk down to the, their mailbox. And there's kids that are sick and get it. By the way, that's the, the, the quickest growing population of illness is youth. So that should tell you something because they're not open, it's not an age problem, right? So we have to scrap these. This is all nonsense. If you believe that there's not much we can do to help you, because you're just, mom's just age, hand me the donut, hand me my drugs, right? Um, so we gotta go past that, yeah? Say yeah. 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 All right, hallelujah. Yeah. So the four essentials, so if I were to ask you guys, what are the four absolute requirements you have to have just to survive, I'm not talking about be healthy, but like to exist. Water. 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 Yeah. There we go. Food. Yeah. Right? So you need nutrients, yeah. you need water and hydration. What was the other one I heard? Air. Air. Yeah. Oxygen is good, I've heard. Yeah. All right. So food, water, air. What else do you absolutely have to have to like exist? Shelter. Shelter? Shelter? Yeah. Yeah. It's handy, but you can live without it. Sweet. So you can live without food, I'll use biblical math, about 40 days without food. Four days without water or liquids. About four minutes without air before your brain starts to die. What can you not even live four seconds without? Bingo, bango, you should know that one, right? That's your deal. Mental impulse. Brain activity, life force. In fact, that's when you're considered clinically dead when there's no more brain activity, right? If your heart stops, they can, you know, put the paddles on you. Eh. Right, you ever seen anybody put paddles on brains? <laughs> right, like when that's done, with it, we're, we're, that's it. Okay, so brain activity is critical. Um, for those of you who have um, been in my office for a little while and you've been to our, that right on the screen? I get trolls for that. <laughs> Sharp, thank goodness it's an expo. Um, for those of you who've been, been in our office for a while, this is, this is what we're working with chiropractically. Because you need a mental impulse, which is your brain, but your brain has to send a signal down your spine and out, okay? So while these are all critical, um, if, I, if I drop dead right now and I have no mental impulse going through me, how much is this going to help me? Zero. What about where well, you could try to like push water into me somehow? <laughs> Not going to help. What if you took like one of those big billow fans to try to pump me full of air. Nothing, because there's no life force in me, right? So these are the four essentials, all right? Obviously, we're kind of focusing here. Air, you know, oxygen, obviously you can sit here and breathe, but how do we take that to the next level? We exercise, cardiovascular, you get some movement, okay? And by the way, we have uh, the best personal training team in town here, Wells Fitness, all right? So uh, let me just say, in case I forget, if anybody in here, anyone you know, wants to take their health and fitness to another level from that standpoint. These guys are amazing. I have brochure and their cards. Um, but also if you have a limitation, old injury, some trauma, um, they're really good at tailoring 
programs around that for you. Because that stops a lot of people. Well, I would go, but I got this old this bad knee, so I just don't work out. So again, that's we're getting back to here. Well, I'd like to be healthier, but my knee. Well, let's go. What kind of brain? Am I? Right? Get the healthy knee. So seek the help. So those guys are great. Thanks Thank for coming in, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, us, you guys already know. Then these numbers were from I put this talk together I don't know, years ago. Everything's worse now. The numbers are bigger, but the old numbers are bad enough, so I just left them there, right? right? The most rapid increase, in, so cancer death rates, if you kind of just Google it, you'll get all the government stats, which I don't even know if I trust those, but they'll say cancer death rates are down a little bit, but cancer rates are going up, but the death rate is down. Now, when they say, so, so that means the survival rate's getting better. Well, what's the survival rate? This isn't a cancer talk. I do little, have a little cancer talk, but five years. So if you're diagnosed with cancer and you live beyond five years, that's considered a survival. We beat cancer. But if you die five years in, in one day, you beat cancer. If cancer killed you on year six, it's not a cancer problem. You sort of, so the stats will say that you, we cured the cancer. Right? So they're a little skewed there. Um, but more concerning is the greatest increases in people under 50, right? So that, that's concerning, right? Because you can't say, well, that's an age problem. Age caused that, right? How about diabetes, right, through the roof? Um, type 2 diabetes, by and large, if it's caught, it's totally reversible, right? If you need to see your trainers, <laughs> right? Obesity, we're pushing three quarters, or overweight or obese, and a fourth of our kids. So again, the concern is if our kids are already unwell, 20% of kids have a chronic illness. They have a diagnosed chronic illness, one in five kids. I got asthma, I got neurodevelopmental, this or that. I'm on the spectrum, 20%, right? Uh, obviously you can imagine adults uh, are, are more. I believe it's uh, over 65, 50% have two or more chronic illnesses. Some big numbers. And again, that's not meant to be the normal, right? Autoimmune disorders, asthma, allergies, presence, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's like, well, why is this happening? Oh, well, it's because it's, it's, it's funny, but it's not funny. So check this out, nature versus nurture. You've got your genetics here, and here's your lifestyle. Your lifestyle choices will determine the expression of your genetic blueprint. I told you we'd get into this. So your gene, I'm gonna spice this up with some different colors. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's say this is your, your gene, right? And on the outside of your gene, you've got these little proteins, okay? And those are called epi, meaning on the outside, genomes. This new color is terrible. <laughs> Epigenomes. And those epigenomes are little proteins, right? And they turn on and off. And they turn your gene on or off. Guess what controls these epigenomes? How you think. I watched some news, man, I am so upset. Boom, you just turn a gene on or off. I had a donut versus an apple. Boom, I just turned a gene on or off. I did an exercise for the last week. Boom, you just turn genes on or off. Or are they good genes or the bad genes? So you can have a <laughs> I need an adjustment. You can have a bad gene, but it, it should never be turned on. You guys with me? So they identified a gene for the hangover. We all got a hangover gene. When's the only time you get a hangover? <laughs> when you booze it up. So that is a trigger. It trips these epigenomes, which trip turns the gene on. So is the gene the problem? <laughs> no, it's the booze. It was the trigger. It was the stressor, right? So that's what I mean. We got what we need to be healthy. We're just living lifestyles, and we put ourselves in an environment, knowingly or unknowingly, that's tripping these genes, okay? So that's where we come right in here, all right? So you got to think there's only two reasons we ever get sick, toxicity and or deficiency, probably both. You're either toxic with something that you genetically don't need or require, or you're deficient in something your genes do require. 
So I always use a simple example that most people know. If you're deficient in vitamin C, let's say you get no vitamin C, what eventually, what a disease will you eventually have, like the old sayers? Rickets. Scurvy. Scurvy. Yeah, rickets is vitamin D. You know, the curve, the bowed legs, right? Yeah, scurvy. And scurvy, if you don't know, is really nasty. So we don't have vitamin C. It's essential for the collagen matrix. And the collagen matrix is what holds your blood vessels and all your connective mm -hmm. tissues together. Well, when your collagen starts to fall apart, you start to internally bleed. And your organs basically just kind of fall apart from the inside. You bleed to death. That's scurvy. You know, the gums start relieving. You don't look so good there. Captain, <laughs> right? <laughs> Teeth are falling out. Uh, it's really nasty, but so that's a deficiency. That's if you have no vitamin C. What if you have subclinically just a little bit less than you should have? So your teeth aren't going to fall out, and you're not going to be diagnosed with scurvy, but what's happening to you slowly over time? You're going the wrong way. And as I mentioned, vitamin C makes up the collagen matrix. See, I go on tangents here. This is next month we're doing cardiovascular. The walls of your arteries, uh, any artery, are, there's a collagen matrix, and there's a little muscle in there. Well, if your collagen starts to break down inside the arteries of your heart, what is your body going to do to protect that from falling apart? It's going to put a Band-Aid on it. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. It's going to put a plaque on there to keep it from like blowing up. That's not stupid. That's smart. Your body is actually trying to save you. <laughs> right? And then we go, and what's in that plaque, by the way? There's cholesterol in the plaque. Mm -hmm. So then they go, well, cholesterol is the problem. It's not the problem. Cholesterol is the effect. Okay, well, anyway, I'm getting off tangents here. <laughs> but the reality is, so we're back to deficiency. Toxicity, we're back to the donut, the Coca Cola. You know, anything that your genes don't recognize is basically a poison. Like, does your DNA know what a Coca-Cola even is? And you put that in there, it's like, oh, what is that? And now i got to figure out how to metabolize it, how to excrete the waste, right? And, and so imagine a lifetime of this. So we're all going to be exposed to some of this, right? But you can minimize it. You can make better choices, okay? So you don't get sick, you do sick. This is paramount, right? Oh, uh, you know what? I had some bad luck today. I went by the preschool, and there was a couple of sick, snotty kids there. They gave me their cold. <laughs> I got it from them. That's interesting, because I was at the same preschool all day, and I didn't get the cold. How does that work? You guys follow me? <laughs> right? You're going, oh, they gave it to me. No one gave it to you. You did it. I ate the donut. I didn't sleep. I watched the news. I was all upset. My immune system went from ear to ear. Then I got exposed, and now my body's expressing healing signs, mucus, coughing, whatever, right? So you don't get sick, you do sick. So that's the first part of like just being accountable. Like uh, if I get a cold, I know that I went multiple nights with not enough sleep, and I probably made some poor choices, nutritionally or otherwise. And then my immune system just tanks it. Boom, it's like the, it's the seed or the soil. Mm -hmm. Right? It's kind of like if I go to the trash dump and there's a bunch of rats running around, and I go, hey, honey, look at all that trash these rats brought here. <laughs> so I'm going to kill all the rats, right? But I'm going to leave the garbage there. And I come back next week, what's there? Rats, right? So what's the solution is I got to get rid of this junk. You guys with me? All right? So wellness is going to be the 180 of that. You need purity and sufficiency. That's what your genetic blueprint requires, right? Purity and sufficiency. Does that make sense? So that's what's gonna tell your genes to do good things and operate the way they're supposed to operate, right? So I'll give you some examples. Um, everybody's familiar with the Great Lakes. And at one point, those were beautiful, healthy lakes. Uh, and I can't remember when it was. I want to say 70s, 80s that we started here, you know. They're very polluted, right? We had farms and factories around the borders of these lakes, and they would just dump all the runoff and then the fertilizers from the farming and etc. would go into the lakes. So after years and decades of that, they became super toxic. Right? I don't know if you can see in the back, these are all dead fish. Right? 
So we came up with this great idea to have the Great Lakes Fish Salvage Program. So not only was it the fish, but the birds would eat the fish. Mm -hmm. They were toxic, so their eggs were real thin. Remember all that? So their, their offspring weren't surviving the eggs. So we're worried about the birds going extinct. Um, it's a big deal. So they diagnosed the fish with uh, diseases, including cancerous tumors. Okay. So how would you treat that fish? You know, these fish have cancer and illnesses, right? How what, would you uh, use little fish scalpels? You know, and, you know, just cut out the tumors and then just let them back into the lake. Makes sense to me. Uh, how about radiation? You know, we'll, we'll burn these suckers off. How's that? And then we'll put them back into the lake. No. Sound like a plan? That should fix them up. No. Oh, uh, how about we give them some chemotherapy pills? Some radiation, <laughs> some chemo, we'll cut the tumors off, and then put them back into the lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? No good? No. <laughs> what do we do with people? We cut them, we burn them, and we chemical them. Because it makes sense for humans, but not for fish. So one of the things that we've been kind of groomed to think is that we're some sort of super species. We're, you know, I get it, I'm a, I'm a believer, so I got my Christian perspective, but biologically we're, we're like animal, right? We're part of the animal kingdom. Yeah, we need the same thing. So if I got a dog, guess what it needs? Food, air, water, mental impulse. <laughs> It has cells, it's got all the same stuff I have, just, you know, operates differently. So, you know, we've kind of removed ourselves. Well, obviously, that's ridiculous, Todd. You wouldn't do that. Fish, what's the obvious solution for the fish? Right? Anybody? Stop polluting the lake. So we're gonna go with people, we're gonna cut that off, we're gonna burn, we're gonna chemical them, but they did nothing to stop polluting their environment. So you're like walking ecosystems. Right? But that's what we've been taught. We're kind of think that we're different than the rest of them. We know that that's ridiculous. You know what happens when we take an animal from captivity, or you know, from the wild, a perfectly healthy animal, and, and then we put them in a cage and feed them, you know, like man-made food. You know, it's kibble for animals, but you know, not what he was eating out in the wild. What happens to those animals? They get sick. They get cancer. They get heart disease. They get arthritis. All the same stuff we have. I go to nature. They're exercising, they're moving, they're, they're free to roam about, they're eating the food that's genetically congruent, and lo and behold, they don't have these problems. But we're different, because, you know, we're humans. We're, right? You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So we got to start thinking about things differently. All right, we're not doing well. Obviously, that's an extreme example. We're, we're, not, we're not doing well. So disease stems from toxicity deficiency. Deficiency of what? You know, minerals, enzymes, essential uh, fatty acids, alkalizing veggies, protein and fat, water, mind-body connection, that's your mental impulse, right? Oh, by the way, I should add in here, exercise. Mm -hmm. It is a nutrient, mm -hmm. right? It has now been shown that movement is the number one nutrient for your brain. Mm -hmm. So if you sit on the couch all day, you're deprived of an essential nutrient. If you don't have the nutrients you need, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I try to inject a little humor here. There. Oh, yeah. there you go. Hippocrates, 400 BC, father medicine, like food, beer medicine, and red food. Pretty simple. Um, so it was really around the turn of the century. Medicine wasn't what it is today, right? If you if you guys like history and just kind of studying that kind of stuff, um, looks up look up the Flexner report. This guy was John D. Rockefeller's right hand man. Anybody heard of John D. Rockefeller? <laughs> Lovely guy. Um, and anyway, John D. Rockefeller, as you know, is in the oil business, right? and there's a lot of byproducts from. Well, how can I make this into some, some moolah? And from there was born the pharmaceutical industry. And what Flexner did was he went around to all the medical schools of the day, which were mostly naturopathic. They were mostly like natural. 
there was a few that were starting to get into pharmacological and stuff like that. So what Flexion did is he rounded up all the schools, found out the ones that were teaching pharmacology. Rockefeller gave huge grants to build these beautiful institutions, you know, to make it scientific, and they basically put all those natural schools out of business. Right? If you take an aspirin under a spoon, you know, and light it, light it, it'll turn black. It's from crude oil. So the basis of most drugs are petroleum. But it's really interesting. Anyway, I digress. See another slide. Another. <laughs> right. But medicine never had anything to do with pharmacology. See, the problem is, is your body is actually a giant pharmacy. Every drug that's ever been synthetically created in a lab was because they found it in the human and then artificially created the synthetic version. Right. But food, as Hippocrates said, that would be herbs as well. They're medicinal. All that's been kind of lost, but you know. A few hundred years ago, that was our medicine, plants, herbs, food, and, and that's, the problem is Rockefeller can't patent herbs. He can't patent food, so we have to synthetically make something to patent it to make money off. Right. So anyway, food. All right. uh, these are nervous system stressors. So this is my wheelhouse, the nervous system. So your diet can stress your nervous system. Okay. Uh, we'll get into some of that stuff there. Uh, <laughs> some of you, you know, I started doing nutrition talks 20 years ago, um, and back then it was like, ooh, but now people are like, yeah, I, I'm aware of this, or I've heard that. Um, like, you've probably heard that milk isn't good for you. Mm -hmm. And some of you might be going, it is? Yeah. Aren't you supposed to need that for strong bones? <laughs> the countries that have the highest dairy consumption have the highest rates of osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Seriously. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, okay, so first of all, where do we get this idea? Well, first, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Why does a cow produce milk? Who's first it for? Baby. First baby. Baby cows. cows. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, and then we have humans, right? And mom produces milk. And is human milk the same as cow milk? No. Are they trying to grow the same thing? No. <laughs> no. I don't think we're trying to grow cows. No. Okay. So they're different animals, right? The proteins in them are totally different, right? Um, so anyway, I think it was around the 1950s, the Dairy Association got together and said, hey, let's put together pamphlets, let's get into the school systems, and let's promote milk as you need it for strong bones, healthy body. You don't want your kid to be a little weakling with rickets. Get your, get your milk, right? Does the body good. Remember that? That was the 80s, 90s, I think. I don't know if they still do that. So who's supposed to drink cow's milk? Baby calves. Okay. And what's the difference between raw milk and pasteurized milk? Well, raw milk straight from the cow, right? So pasteurized milk's obviously been pasteurized. pasteurized, which means they flash heat it, right? They superheat it very quickly, which kills off any bacteria or anything that might be floating around there. But it also kills off essential enzymes and makes it a dead food. So if we didn't, and then by the way, it's not about germs, it's about shelf life. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with, oh, there's going to be bacteria. That's weird because your grandfather, your great-grandfather, and my great-grandfather, the world survived drinking raw milk from cows and goats for centuries. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's a big lie that is dangerous. Right? And by the way, the, the, the dairies that produce and bottle raw milk, they have the most stringent uh, sanitation rules around it. Like it's as clean as it can get. So the problem is when they pasteurize, is they kill all the enzymes. And enzymes are what make a food live. So when you go buy a box of, you know, whatever off the shelf, there's no enzymes in it. That's why it can stay on the shelf for five years and you can open it up and you still got a Twinkie or whatever. So you basically have a dead food so the milk can last in your fridge for a month. Right? And what happens when you feed pasteurized milk to a calf? It's dead in six weeks. Because they're not able to assimilate the nutrients and there's no enzymes, it's a dead food. All right. Now, cats drinking a lot of it, but nonetheless. But this is what we've been told to give our kids. Now, one of the things milk does is it creates an acidic environment. And acidity uh, ultimately has to be neutralized by your blood. And so that usually happens through your minerals. So if you run out of minerals because your diet's deficient, your body has to neutralize the acidity or you'll die. It has to keep your blood pH between 7 and 7.4, or whatever it is, 7.2, 7.4. <clears throat> so 
So when you run out of nutritional minerals, where is your mineral storehouse in your body? Your bones. So now your body's going, man, I gotta deal with all this acid, so I'm going to leach calcium and minerals from the bones and dump it into the blood to neutralize this. And milk creates an acidic environment. So if anything, milk is pushing you towards osteoporosis, not the other way. And from what I've read, 20% of milk is actually pus, white blood, white blood cells. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Dumping that out. <laughs> My coffee's dang it. <laughs> so much for milk in the morning. <laughs> yeah, now listen, do I like you know, I'm a yeah, I like a good organic coffee. I like a little bit of cream, but I substitute that with coconut milk, make fat coffee. That's another talk. Ketones and all that. Alright. So when you feed your dog, who's a dog fan? Who has a dog? No, who had a dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but we love our pets, right? Mm -hmm. Fair enough, you should. Um, would you feed your dog a bunch of, you know, a steady diet of hot dogs? What would happen if you did? Potato chips, hot dogs, soda, what would happen to your dog? She'd Well, first of all, you'd be probably clean enough for a big mess. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> right? So you would never do that to your dog. You just know, like, you know, you... <laughs> Honey, don't get those... Doritos to the dog, those are bad for him. Mm -hmm. Those are for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing. It's funny, but it's not funny. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're in part of the animal kingdom, just like the dog. So how can it be bad for the dog, but it's good for my two-year-old? Mm -hmm. It's not, right? Now, let me just back up. Again, if you're healthy and you're doing things to stay functioning, can you have these same points in a while? Yeah. Okay, so don't think like, oh man, I can't do anything. Right. Uh, we'll get into that too. Anybody heard of this cat? That's actually a guy. <laughs> Weston Price. Uh, he was a, a dentist, a biological dentist and researcher back in the 20s and 30s. And he wrote a book, which I recommend try to find it if you can or buy it, called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. Because the reality is if you understand principles, because guess what? What's the latest nutrition fad? What's like the big thing? Keto. Yeah. Keto. And what was the big thing before that? Paleo. Paleo. And what was the big thing? Right? And, and then next year or two, there's going to be something else, right? It's, it's inevitable. It's Atkins, Weight Watchers, or whatever, right? So again, if you understand the principles, the next fad can come along, and you can filter that through the principles. Principles go back to here, for the thirds. And he's basically, in his book, found out what I've basically been talking about. He studied the healthiest people on the planet. They had the longest lifespans, routinely into their hundreds. No, they had no chronic degenerative, so 100 year olds, a whole tribe of them. Nobody's got heart disease, nobody's got cancer. A little bit of arthritis because they're still working at 100, like farming and like, you know, hunting animals and stuff. Right? Now, this is the 20s and 30s. And so he traveled to Australia, studied the Aborigines, studied Eskimos, like, right? He went to the Andes Mountains and the Inuit tribe. He went all over the world and studied these primitive tribes. And he found basically that the further they were removed from Western society, they had no problems. And he was a dentist, so he started off by just studying their teeth. Like the ones that had, you know, they didn't have crest and a toothbrush back then, these <laughs> tribes. But they had no cavities, perfect palates, perfect jaws, perfect teeth. And he also started correlating, huh, these people also don't have cancer, heart disease, and all these other problems that plague the other ones. And then he found some tribes that were kind of starting to be influenced by Western civilization. You know, boy, they're importing the sugar and they're making, you know, baked goods and, you know, whatever, sugary things. Sure enough, the kids, like their jaws weren't forming properly, so they didn't breathe properly. That's a whole other talk. Um, they had a bunch of caries, they had heart disease, they had cancer, you know, all kinds of chronic conditions. So again, we're getting back to what do you genetically require? These people were sufficient and pure. As soon as they started dipping into toxicity and deficiency, we got problems, right? And there's no drug that's gonna fix a toxicity or deficiency. In fact, the drug is a toxicity, and some of the side effects may cause deficiencies. So you really gotta weigh that out and just make sure you're doing everything you can to be sufficient, right? <clears throat> So here's what these people had in common. 
mineral rich water supply. Right? They're just getting stuff that ran off the mountains or from a spring or what have you. One of the selling points of our house was it had a well that went that goes 360 down to the, to the aquifer. So we got spring water pumping right in, which is pretty cool. That was my main thing. Who cares about the house? I got spring water right out of the tap. I'm in. <laughs> Uh, cut off from foods and commerce, which I mentioned. They, they had fruits and vegetables. Did they go to Publix? Yeah. So they only had which, what was local and fresh, like right there, right? And obviously it's organic. It hasn't been so seasonal. Whole grains, and most of them would soak their grains. Again, not the, mm -hmm. we don't have time to get into all of it. They'd soak the grains because the husk has phytic acid and some anti nutrients, so they would soak them overnight. And that would neutralize that and be easier on your digestion, which, by the way, you guys can do that. But um, there's another book, it should be in my resources that I'm going to give you tonight, called Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon, who's a prodigy of Weston Price. It's amazing. It, that kind of became our nutrition Bible. Yes. Like, you know, it's good. Uh, little meat, little fish, raw dairy from the goat or the cow that they might have had roaming around. But that was pretty much it. And they got. You know, daily usable vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, keyword there, reusable. And they are obviously exercising. The average primitive person, they walk 12 kilometers a day. So what's that, five miles? On average, because they're hunter-gatherers. They gotta go collect wood, I gotta go find an you know, etc. And they usually, you know, the ladies probably had like three kids on their back. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is Curlian photography, <laughs> I said it right, Curlian? This is a fast food hamburger with three to seven megahertz of life coming out. I think everything's got energy profile to it, right? And then this is a living uh, sprout, mm. over 150 megahertz. So now just think, what are you fueling your body with, right? It's called rocket fuel. So we can put, you know, the dead, enzymeless, nutrient deficient food in you. It's not gonna give your body or genes what it needs. Lentils, so I gotta go eat a bowl of lentils. You can add that to a salad, it's not bad. All right? Color, power of red. Red fruits like strawberries, tomatoes, watermelon contain lycopene. Lycopene can help fight heart disease and cancer. Now, again, all the tomatoes, that's a nightshade family. Right? Those have oxalates or this with anti nutrients. So here's what I'm gonna say about all that because it's just way too deep for an hour to <laughs> Everybody's different. I could eat broccoli. And go, man, that was delicious. And sleep like a baby and wake up fine the next day. Maybe Carl eats broccoli and like, oh my god, my guts were wrecked. I couldn't sleep all night, right? But it's broccoli, it's healthy. Everyone's a bit different, right? And whatever your body's been through up to that point. So you may have a sensitivity. You may be sensitive to oxalates or uh, phytic acid, etc. So, or lectins, as, a, as a, these are big topics, right? So here's what you do: you eat the broccoli and you go, ooh. I don't feel good. Guess what you should not eat anymore? <laughs> right? Like listen, actually listen to your body. Why? I feel real sluggish today. I'm not thinking straight, my head's all the way. Hmm, what was my last meal? And if you start paying attention, even journal, you'll see what your body likes and doesn't like. Because even if it's healthy, it might not be healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Right? But so again, I'm giving you some broad strokes here. Right? Power of green, your cruciferous veggies. In fact, broccoli again. Cauliflower, cabbage, contain indoles. They're a group of phytochemicals that play a role in helping to prevent breast and prostate cancer. Loaded with antioxidants, right? Dun, dun, dun. Yellow and orangey things, right? Boost the immune system, eyesight, slow aging, who wants to slow aging? <laughs> you can't actually slow the clock, but how you age, right? I guess would be the thing, okay? Uh, let's move forward. How about supplementation? Everybody's like, what's up? You know, we've been to GNC, I haven't been to GNC in years, but walk down even at the aisle at Publix or Health Basket or whatever, and there's just all bottles of everything. I don't know. Right? Well, let's see. If I cut a check for 10000 bucks, maybe I can get a few things here. <laughs> you need them all. Um, so this is based on the available literature. Okay? And again, this is a broad stroke. This is what, for human DNA. If you have a specific problem, like, hey, Kyle, I got stage three cancer. Okay, well, you might need some different nutrition and supplemental. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what do we all need sitting here for our genes that we are chronically deficient in as a society? This is what the literature tells us. Uh, come on. 
Mm -hmm. Omega-3 fatty acids, particularly EPA and DHA, which is going to be found, sorry if you're a vegetarian, it's found in animal product, mm -hmm. with the exception of a, a certain type of algae. So if you're vegetarian, there's an algae that has EPA and DHA. Okay? <coughs> but fish oil. Right here. So my kids take this right off the spoon. Okay? So fish oil is one of them. And again, it's not about the fish, it's about the EPA and DHA. So um, have you guys heard of that inflammation's bad? Yes. Uh -huh. We'll talk about that next month when we get into the, the heart health talk. So let me just scribble something real, real quick. Uh, we're supposed to be, this is omega-6, this is omega, sorry, I might have it backwards, sorry. Omega-3, omega-6. That's up to what's the ratio supposed to be, right? So this is your fish oil. This is your vegetable oil. What has vegetable oil in it? Everything. Mm -hmm. Soy, corn, right? Anything processed. Just start reading your label. It says any kind of soy, canola, corn oil. It's all, A, it's all likely genetically modified. You don't want to put in that stuff, frankly, food in your body. And it's all rancid right off. So you get that bottle of, what is it, Wesson? What's the old cooking oil? Right, right? It's rancid right off the shelf, right? And it's omega-6. So omega-6 is pro-inflammatory, right? Who wants to be inflamed, right? There's your root causes of, can one of the causes of cancers, your heart diseases, your arthritis, your breakdown, right? And then you've got over here your omega-3, right? Turns off inflammation. So you so it's a ratio. You need enough omega-3s to counter the omega-6, because omega-6 turns on inflammation. Do you need some inflammation? If I broke my leg, do I need inflammation? Yeah, if you have an injury, that's part of a healing cycle. But when you have a healing cycle, once it's done healing, it's supposed to turn itself off. We're done. But if you don't have omega-3, guess what doesn't turn off? You're chronically inflamed, and you are going to have disease, and we'll give it whatever name you want. Alzheimer's, cardiovascular, cancer, lupus, chronically inflamed. So the literature over and over, if you only took one supplement, high quality. This is what we take, this is what we carry. I don't make money selling supplements. You get it wherever you want, but people are like, what do you take? This stuff is triple molecularly distilled, the fish are sourced from a very uh, renewable place, and you know, off in Norway, and it's little fish, right? Sardines, anchovies, and it's molecularly distilled three times. So any any toxins that would be in the fish from the ocean, they're gone. And you don't taste fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing. If you took some stuff, I bought this big tub at Walmart for ten bucks, and you're burping fish all day, it's because it's horrible quality. You don't want to take that. Okay. Um, now the next one is vitamin D. You guys have probably heard in recent years, that's kind of important, mm -hmm. right? This happens to have vitamin D right in it. So you're hitting two birds with one stone, okay? Or fish, excuse me. <laughs> Cancer, uh, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis. I have a handout for you tonight that talks about vitamin D. They did a study with females in breast cancer. Vitamin D deficient, 60% more likely to develop breast cancer. Not 6%, 60%. Right? So I look at this stuff as healthcare, right? Not your Blue Cross card you got in your wall. That's not healthcare. That's sick care. Well, when I'm sick and broken, they're going to look after me. Well, I don't want to be sick and broken. Unfortunately, your insurance ain't going to pay for that. Right? Uh, or your personal trainer, or likely your chiropractor, at least not in large part. Or your massage or whatever, right? Um, so that's the for you have. You know, I want to have health. Well, you're gonna have to invest in your health. So I always tell people you're either gonna pay to be healthy or pay to be sick. Pick your battles, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, probiotics. That's another one. So again, just like any supplements, there's high quality and there's crappy. If it has to be refrigerated, it's not gonna survive your gut. Does that make sense? Yes. You're putting it into a hot burning acid gut. <laughs> but I need to keep it in the refrigerator for the bug to survive. They're, not getting, they're never going to make it to your intestine, right? So we carry this. You can order it yourself. We just carry it so it's easy for people. Again, it's, I'll have resources for you. Um, 
probiotics, and then super greens. Basically, super greens is there's different ones out there. It's basically a whole food vitamin. It's the best place to get your vitamins and minerals is from food because your DNA knows what exactly how to you know assimilate and use the nutrients. Right? If you just go get Centrum down at CVS, you just have colorful pee. And that's about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Those four things. Um, sorry. This is what we take. And that's just every day. It doesn't matter if I feel good, I feel bad. It doesn't matter. So that's every day. That's part of my creating sufficiency. And then I'm obviously not replacing a healthy diet with that. So I eat healthy. But even if you eat healthy, according to the literature, we're likely still to be deficient in that because of farming practices, our soils are depleted, you know. So you gotta supplement. The probiotics, the, the, the drinks, like the Danon drinks you get uh, in the yeah. grocery, no good. Yeah, nah. You're better off if you just want like a food source which was really great by the way, is your fermented stuff, like your sauerkraut, mm -hmm. a couple, you know, a spoonful of that with your meal, has loads of uh, good bacteria. Mm -hmm. And with the probiotics too, your body will kind of, what's the word, kind of get used to it, so you want to switch it up, like maybe do a month of this, and the next month I'm going to get some organic sauerkraut, and make your own, <laughs> kimchi, stuff like that, right? Your fermented foods are great. Well, alcohol for this. That's true. So, <laughs> free, free, a day, free a day, and that's it. All right, stay full rule. Stay full rule. That's hard to say. Stay full. full. <laughs> Eat enough food to stay full. Um, healthy fats. The key word is healthy fats, not your Western oil. Avocados, fish, eggs. Um, right. um, healthy fats and protein will keep you satiated. I right, get rid of all the cereal, not that no one eats cereal in here. That's but it's healthy cereal. <laughs> what plant does the flake grow off of? <laughs> it has to be extruded and processed to be a flake, right? It's, it's a non food. Anyway, we will occasionally have cereal at our house when we're pinched for time. It's not really healthy. Um, but you want to eat real foods, avocados, things like that. But that keeps you satiated. You eat a bowl of cereal, you're like jittery, and then like an hour later, you're hungry and tired. Like, well, what was the point of that? Because right, right? you basically just got a big a sugar spike and a drop. Vacation rule. Who's excited about that? So that's your, hey, it's Friday night football, whatever. Monday night football? I don't watch football. Um, unless it's the Gators. So. <laughs> uh, you know, you can have your cake and eat it too, periodically. That's assuming you're, you know, you're healthy, hence the after. If you're significantly overweight or have an illness, these rules may not apply. But uh, yeah, so I, you know, and I, full disclosure, I like probably what most people like. I like pizza. Who likes pizza? Mm -hmm. Is it good for you? Mm -hmm. yeah, my favorite food is like homemade lasagna. <laughs> probably not good for you. you know, do I like distilled things? Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't make a habit out of, you know, it's not part, it's not a staple. You understand? So, you know, and I do other things to stay functional so that when I indulge in those things, my body knows how to take care of it, you know, etc. All right. So, again, keep it simple. The perfect on diet. 80%, you know, you've heard of the 80 20 rule, kind of applies to everything you wear. Uh, you got to be in your closet and you only wear 20%. <laughs> you wear 20% of the clothes 80% of the time. I will just get rid of the rest. So that applies in a lot of areas. I forget that it was a science. Pareto. Thank Pareto. you, Pareto's Law. Thank you. Um, but you can do better. You can try to start at 80 and try to go to 90. Food by God, what is that? Natural. Fresh vegetables, fruit. Yeah, real real stuff, right? Not a plate that was came out of a machine. If it's made in a factory, by the way, if it's in a box or a jar, your food was in a factory. <laughs> right? So that's food by hand. Okay, so you want to minimize that. That's your game day or whatever, having a party, and this is day in and day out, you know, which is cool. And again, you can make real tasty, healthy stuff. It might just take, you know, if you've been cooking and eating the same way for 60 years, you have habits, mm -hmm. and you just need to learn some new habits, that's all. Which can be fun, especially if you, you know, we got a few folks that are retired in here. You got some free time, learn some new cooking stuff, you know, mix it up. Uh, what fits your busy schedule better? Exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know what the truth is, and these guys can probably back me up, you don't even really necess necessitate a whole hour, right? You do the right kind of exercise. Yeah, it's, it, it really doesn't take much time. You just need to know to do the right thing. Do the right thing. At the right amount and not compare yourself with the others who are nine-year-old running a marathon because <laughs> that's not your goal. Oh, they like that. <laughs> You want your right. joints to be safe. And, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, it depends on which book you read, but, you know, even as little as 15 to 20 minutes done doing the right things can have a global physiological effect on you, which is very positive. So you got your cardiovascular, you got your strengthening, some stretching, some balance, right? All the stuff we need to do. I'm just peppering that. That's not nutrition, but you know, again, it's, it's everything's a part of a lifestyle. So even being a practice member in our office and take care of your spine nerves is part of a healthy lifestyle. It's part of a strategy. So the same as exercise, the same as eating healthy. All right, and even exercise, we're supplementing it. Because I talked about the primitive folks. Well, they didn't have, they didn't have a 24 hour fitness. <laughs> they had to pick up logs and carry it three miles to camp. We don't do that. Good. So we actually have to supplement movement and physical activity, hence the gym and things like that. And I love the trainers. Do not know where to go or start, start there. All right. So, how about stress? Exercising with the family is a great way to go. Get massages, right? Prayer, meditation, hot bath, mini vacations, chiropractic care. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest things that chiropractic care does is actually because it's your nervous system, and your nervous system is what interprets and deals with the stress in your life. Mm -hmm. So when your nervous system's happy, your body can better deal with those stressors. It doesn't get rid of your stress, sorry. <laughs> sloughed off bajillions of cells and your body's created new ones. What system is directing that? Your nervous system. And what are those new cells made from? The food you ate. Mine's made of Doritos. <laughs> How's that working for you? Well, I have this. Alright. Um, I always talk about chiropractic because I just think 
it's so critical because I've had people come in, I eat healthy, I do yoga, I meditate, but I still got all these problems. And then we get the nervous system clear and everything clicks, right? So most people are like, yeah, neck pain, back pain, headaches, it's like, yeah, chiropractic helps with those things. What most people don't realize is that chiropractic can help with all kinds of things. This one we see the most, like, like bloating and reflux all the time, right? And what I wish everyone knew was more the big things, the immune system, right? Metabolism, weight loss. I had people just, I just started getting adjusted. And I've dropped 20 pounds. Cool. Fatigue's a big one, right? Some of you probably noticed that your energy levels are higher, okay? And I talked about that. How does your body adapt and cope with stressors in life? Really, really important. So if you've heard me speak before, you know, I mentioned my kids. Um, you know, they've never had an antibiotic, and they're 14 and 17. They've never had a Tylenol. All right, we don't, we don't go to doctors. Did you get your physical? Why? You might think, that's crazy. you got to go to the doctor. Well, what's the doctor going to measure? They're going to look at my blood and go, well, that's bad, that's bad, and that's bad. This is what you need. Yeah. Did they see if I was toxic? Did they see if I was deficient? No, if this is wrong, take this drug, right? And then the drug, and this isn't Dr. Todd's philosophy, this is common on, you can read the drug labels. The drugs will cause toxicities and deficiencies, which lead to more, more, drugs. more drugs. And around and around we go. Okay, is there a time and place for a drug? I don't mean to be that up, there is. But if you're not addressing like your physiology and fixing where am I deficient, where am I toxic, <laughs> then you are kind of spinning our wheels, right? How do you guys like this? You take a picture of this, bring it home, just in case you forget what we talked about. <laughs> I heard a voice. Yes, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. If you have a doctor who takes blood work on you every six months, uh -huh. doesn't that blood work show if you had any have any toxicities or deficiencies? So not necessarily. They, no. they don't have blood work to show that. Um, not necessarily, because the toxins could be lodged in your tissues. It could be lodged in your bones and your liver and your oh, hair, and it might not. Blood work. Right. And your blood's constantly change. You know, I mean, your blood work today is different than yesterday based, based on what you ate. Were you stressed out yesterday? You'll have stress hormones in there. You'll have elevated cholesterol. You know, it's constantly dynamic. Plus, with your blood, they're only looking for certain things. Right, they're not looking for everything, for sure. So, you know, you, I'm not saying don't get blood work done, right? I'm just telling you kind of our philosophy, you know. Um, but you want a doctor that's looking at it from a global perspective, not a mechanistic compartmentalized, because you're not a you're not a machine with a bunch of parts. You're this global, you know, you're a walking ecosystem. And if you affect one thing, it's going to affect everything else, right? But they're not really looking at that. Uh, there you go. Here's some thoughts for you. Next year, will you be healthier or sicker? Bigger or smaller? I actually want to be bigger. <laughs> <My weight. laughs> more energy or less? More productive or less productive? Better quality of life or worse? Will you be happier or less? Who's responsible for the answer to these questions? Don't say your genes. I get really mad. Don't say your doctor. Is your doctor responsible? No. Is your health insurance responsible? No. Right? I mean, I'm going to say everybody. I'm just throwing, mm -hmm. follow me here. Everybody has doctors and health insurance. Mm -hmm. How's that work for us? We're all sick. Mm -hmm. Right? Or well, we're not doing well. So we got to, we got to, you know, dive in and become our own advocates, if you will. Okay? I don't have all the answers. You know, I don't mean to sit up here like I got it all figured out. And me and Mike just, we're perfect. We, we have our challenges, you know. Um, and if we had some health crisis, I would go to the emergency room and see a doctor, <laughs> right? Um, but the idea is to live in a way that's congruent with the way we're created so that I don't end up in a crisis, barring some accident, you know? Um, that's kind of the idea. You know, my kids have never had a drug in their body. They survived pertussis, they survived chickenpox, they survived flus and fevers and and as a result of going through those things, guess what their immune system's like now? Mm -hmm. A rock of Gibraltar, right? Yeah, they're strong kids. Um, and that's, again, a whole other topic. But, you know, our kids, they're supposed to have, the literature says that if they don't have a high fever, 
before the age of three, they will never fully develop and maximize their immune function. Mm. Now, a high fever is defined as 107 or up. Sorry, oh. sorry, 103.7. Mm. But what do we do? Oh my God, it's 100.3. Boom, Tylenol. So their immune system, because you need, you know, the body's smart, it's trying to, it's activating things. It's tr turning trips. It's activating those epigenomes and turning things on. But man intervenes, because man is smarter than its creator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right? Not so much. Not so much. So this is what we're doing. So this, yeah, right? That was the latest thing at the time. Uh, but it's great. So I'm doing a heart talk, heart health talk. Um, it's it's based off of this book, which is written by a cardiologist. He worked in the you know Western medicine in a hospital for a decade, and then he realized what we're doing not really getting people better. And he started having these conversations with the higher ups at the hospital, you know, and they didn't like that. And they basically told him, "You just play ball this way, or we're not going to keep you here." And so, long story short, is he opened up his own uh, private clinic. He does things through nutrition and supplementation. He'll still prescribe drugs if it's absolutely necessary, but he's looking for where are you toxic, where are you deficient, what's going on. And guess what his wife does? She's a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the one that got him thinking differently. And then when he started probing and actually asking questions outside the box, the system started to shut him up. And he was out of there. Right? So that's happening. Carolyn and Dr. She just stepped out. What do you need? Oh, that's okay. I don't know if we you can help, but yeah. I was thinking I might have a sign up sheet. So if you're like, yeah, I like I'll get it. Don't worry about it. We'll find a way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. Um, so, anyway, just put in your head. I always like to get people to take action. Like, I don't know where I want to be in a month. Just put your name. <laughs> put the intention there. If you can't make it, you'll tell us the day before you do it. Uh, you find a piece of paper? <laughs> I got it. Okay. <laughs> There's a clipboard up against the wall over there. So if you I want to come, it. just scribble your first name down. Yes, sir? Um, I have to question your date. My date? Oh. My calendar says the last <laughs> Thursday in February is the 23rd. That's probably I accurate. At that too. Pardon? That's accurate. Okay. So I'm going to go with the 23rd. <laughs> 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 it looks like Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, That's the 26th Sunday. is Sunday. Sorry, you guys probably don't want to be here Sunday, neither do I. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, we'll just go. Sorry, 23rd, yeah, you pass. thank you, Smith. Oh, you're welcome, so um, <laughs> Yeah, so if you think, again, if you think you might, I think I might, just put your good. name down, it's not an obligation, but you put the intention out there, and we'll remind you as we get closer, okay? And, and guess what we're going to touch on in that talk? Nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> but as it relates to cardiovascular. Okay, but again, it's principles. So a lot of this we'll kind of touch on, but we're also going to talk on, um, you know, what did the cardiologist say? What did he find out? So some of the fallacies and things that were being taught culturally about heart health, because you want to know, because they could potentially hurt you. Um, so again, that. So if you have never had your spine checked, we would encourage you to do so. We do complimentary screening for people all the time. They're free. There's no obligation. But they're 15 minutes. So if you have friends or family that just want to like what's going on, we can do that. Um, anybody that's a guest tonight here, we'll give a family discount to for a full exam if you want that. Normally a full exam and x-rays is 297. For our family members, it's 149. So if you want a full exam, just like Carolina who's not here now. <laughs> but I just want to make it, you know, try to remove obstacles for people to get well. And I think that's one of the benefits, whether it's here or anywhere, like, as a chiropractor, I don't have all the answers and all the solutions. But you're here getting a talk and learning some other aspects of health at a chiropractic office. So it's kind of like, why isn't your doctor doing that? Why are you, the, you know, if the doctor's the expert, your medical doctor, your cardiologist, why aren't they giving you a nutrition talk? I mean, everyone in here knows that your diet's going to affect your heart. When's the last time you went to the doctor? You know, let's get into your nutrition. It's not even a topic. So that should be some red flags for you, right? And the reality is, is you know, why would I go to a doctor who I know is not as healthy as me? Mm -hmm. I know. And that's not coming from a place of, what's the word? Being a jerk. <laughs> what's the word? 
That's where arrogance, that's what I'm trying to say. It's just the reality. You know, the doctors are sick. Uh, you know, so I'm not going to take health advice for someone who's unwell and um, has medications themselves, right? Okay. I'm not, I'm broad stroking there. But there are some amazing doctors out there in the world of medicine, and you want to find them. Because if and when you need medicine, you want the ones that, are, that understand the bigger picture. Um, the, the downer is most of them, or many of them, you might be paying out of pocket, or a chunk out of pocket. That's just the system at the moment. So, um, I know we're running out of time, and I'm just going to wrap up with this. If you, you know, we've got a different group in here. So, like my family, you know, I have teenage daughters, my wife and I were in our 40s. So, we don't have health insurance, we have health sharing. And there's a bunch of Christian companies. Mm -hmm. Like we pay 315 bucks for all four of us. And we have, I want to say, like a half a million dollars coverage. So if something happens, you know, I break my leg and I need all this surgery and stuff, I'm covered. The only difference is, so the, the downer is I have a $5,000 doctor. But I don't go to doctors. Because doc, going to the doctor doesn't create health. Doing the things I talked about creates mm -hmm. right? So I do the things that I know, I make choices that I know are gonna protect and grow my health. If I break my leg, it was five grand, that sucks, but now I can get my $100,000 surgery on my femur. You guys with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm up here talking about nutrition. If I had a heart attack, here's my five grand, I'm looked at, you know what I mean? But if I was getting, you know, Blue Cross for my family, we're looking at nine, triple. Nine hundred, twelve hundred dollars a month. Well, that difference between three hundred and twelve hundred, I now have nine hundred bucks. Guess what I can do with that? Personal trainer, chiropractor, <laughs> organic food, <laughs> supplements, and now I'm actually healthier. And I don't need to go to the doctor. You guys with me? So now you're actually investing in healthcare. Yeah. And I'm not here to tell you how to where to put your money into your business. I'm just giving you food for thought. And, um, and you can investigate those things. Um, the one we use is Christian Healthcare Ministry. There's a bunch of, a few others. Um, I had one that was in here. I didn't write it down, but you know she paid for her care here, and then she submitted her accounts, and they reimbursed her for chiropractic care. I'm like, really? That's pretty cool. Um, so I'll have to follow up and say, what was that again? <laughs> uh, but that's the reality. You know, you just kind of, kind of, that is healthcare. So your nutrition is healthcare. Your supplements are healthcare. Chiropractic is healthcare. Working out, having a trainer if you need one, that's healthcare. Going to the doctor, running blood tests and taking pills isn't healthcare, that's sick care. You guys with me? Yeah. Huge, huge understanding. So, I'm gonna shut up. Does anybody have any questions? I just go, I'll just keep talking about stuff. <laughs> uh, very cool. This was in Adelaide, so we were in Australia, so this was Australia to here. Right? Spider-Man came by for a visit. <laughs> You know, I just noticed that your shirt is an Aussie shirt. Yeah. But I didn't notice it. Really like, did you guys notice his shirt? Like yeah, the so Chinese shirt? Yeah, it was a bingo. It was a bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, anybody have any nutrition related questions before you run out the door? Okay. Uh, number one, we've got a package of stuff for you. So, some of the things I talked about. Oh, we have a wrap. Lucky door prize! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Real quick before we do that, if you would like to get fish oil, talk to Carolina either now or on your next visit. If you want to get probiotics, talk to us. If you want to get it wherever you want to get it, just get some. Like we don't make a living selling fish oil. <laughs> this sounds like one of those fish oil sales. <laughs> um, and if you would like to book a family member or a friend for an exam or a consultation, talk to Carolina. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna stop. So we have a patient who is involved with Uncle Matt's, which is a juice company that's based in Claremont. Um, it's an organic Ooh. juice company. So he's given us some free, not like buy one, get one free, but get one free. Actual free. Yeah. <laughs> if you buy seven, you get 50% off of one. You want to pick one? Yeah. I have two to give away. Elaine. There you go. I'm doing well.
Any any questions before you run out of the door? Okay, do you need anything to ask Carolina? And they're like seven dollars for a bottle of Carolina also. If you have anything you want to discuss privately, I'll be meandering around cleaning up stuff. I want to say thank you guys. And if you only if you only just change a little bit every week, one percent, right? Times fifty weeks. Just make it a massive. Fifty percent next year, so you're going this way. Just make a little change, right? You know, I always start by adding something. Well, I really don't want to give up that donut, Todd. I've been eating donuts and smoking cigarettes for fifty years. So if I take away your smoke and your donut, you're gonna explode. So add something. So just put something good in that you're not doing. Like start that way, right? and then eventually, like leaves in the autumn, the bad stuff will start to fall away as you start making better and better choices. It gets easier, okay? So add something, um, and just think small changes. Don't be overwhelmed, like I gotta change my whole world and empty my pantry. Just start making some, just start somewhere, okay? I love and appreciate you all. Thank you for spending time with us tonight. Now I'm going to